Why should I go to church when pastors fail? Well, we need to unpack two big words there, church and pastor. We'll start with church. In the New Testament, the church meant followers of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says that the church is the body of Christ on earth. That is, Jesus is in heaven with the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, but his body is us on earth. The church is simply children of God, brothers and sisters in God's big family. So wherever followers of Jesus join to worship or pray or serve, that is the church. My very favorite image of the church from the Bible comes from Acts chapter 2, and these are the words that describe those early Christians. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. That is, Jesus' followers were praying together, reading scripture together, eating meals together, and sharing communion together. They were experiencing genuine community. You know, community is one of God's great gifts to all of us. Community meets one of the deepest needs we all have, which is to be seen by others, to be known, to be loved, to be prayed for. And also it's vice versa. We actually want to be in contact with other people and in community with them so that we can see them and know them and love them and pray for them. And the truth is all around the world today, churches are experiencing true community. They may be meeting in permanent buildings or temporary buildings or homes, but it's real community. Now, interestingly, churches also experience another thing wherever they gather. That is that at some point, they have a desire for someone to lead them. At some point, there's this deep sense that someone should be guiding them about how to follow Christ. And therefore, every church chooses a spiritual leader. And that leads us to the second word. It's the word pastor. In the New Testament, it means a leader of a church. The pastor, the elder, and the overseer all refer to the person of the same office, which is they lead. The standards for the pastor in the New Testament are very high. Why? Because pastors represent God, period. Didn't say pastors are God. Pastors are humans who represent God. And over the centuries, I believe that most church leaders have stayed true to God. I think they've been faithful to their calling, but not all. And that really shouldn't surprise us because after all, over 50% of the letters in the New Testament have some reference to false teachers and immoral leaders. The pastor's a very high calling with very high standards, but apparently it doesn't come with automatic purity of life or purity of mind. That is, pastors are not holier than thou. <laughs> I say it this way, pastors were first sinners. Then when they met Jesus, they became saved sinners. Then as they grew in their faith, they become spiritually growing sinners. Then when God called them into the pastorate, they became called into ministry centers, <laughs> but always sinners and never immune from temptation or sin. That's the first point I wanna say here about pastors. They are saved sinners called to serve God by serving God's people. The second big thing I wanna say about pastors is that pastors are shepherds. That's literally what the word means. It actually is a word that just means caring for sheep. And even as a shepherd of real sheep leads, feeds, and protects the flock, so spiritual shepherds lead, feed, and protect the people. And whenever pastors forget this calling and end up caring more about themselves than they care about God's people, then something terrible has gone wrong. Recently, I counted up all the high-profile pastors I could think of just in the U.S. who have resigned because of moral failure in the last 10 years, and I stopped counting at 10. Something happened to these men. They had too much power. They had too little accountability. They saw women staff members or church members as a means of personal fulfillment. They began using people and loving things rather than loving people and using things. They, she they sheared God's sheep. And in so doing, they forfeited their role as shepherd. Now, let me be clear, I'm not here to judge. I've got my share of weaknesses and I'm a pastor, but I am here to speak truth. And here's the truth. If we pastors ever use the church for our own ends, whether that's for money, or for sex or for power, we have forfeited the privilege of shepherding the very people of God. So we come back to the question, why should you go to church when pastors fail? Well, think of it this way, if you will. If you're a spiritual person who seeks meaning in life, that is, if you were made for meaning, if you're a relational person who needs other people, that is, you're made for community, if you're an eternal person who will continue to exist way beyond death, that is, you're made for eternity, then there's really only one movement in all the world that welcomes and blesses and encourages all three of those ways you're made, and that is the church. And yes, every church needs a pastor to spiritually guide them and to preach God's word faithfully. In fact, surveys show that the quality of preaching is the number one reason that most people come to church. Now that's good in one sense, people need to know God's word. And a great way to know it is to hear it preached well and faithfully. But it's bad in another sense. We tend to expect pastors to be more than human. We put them up on pedestals and turn them into celebrities. 
But I tell you that that tendency reflects our sinful culture, a celebrity culture, not the kingdom of God that calls us to servanthood. So let me say again, we pastors are human. We are not yet fully redeemed. We are a work in progress, sinner saved by grace. And if pastors let you down, remind yourself, Jesus Christ is the only person in the whole universe who will never let you down. So will you get hurt by the church? Maybe. Should you avoid that possibility? Well, you can, but the cost is high. C.S. Lewis described the cost of that kind of distancing yourself from other people with these words. He said, to love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will certainly be wrung, and by that he means like wringing out a washcloth, and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping your heart intact, you must give it to no one. Wrap it carefully around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your own selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, your heart will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. See, the price of love is the possibility of being hurt. So pray for your pastors, but worship Jesus. Love the body of Christ. Find community with other Christians. Don't give up on the church. However flawed it is, it is still the bride of Jesus Christ. Thanks for letting me into your life today. I hope I've helped you with this important question.